morning and welcome to Kirkley's Local TV's weekly wind up, a program where we're informative, interactive, and we aim to be interesting, lively, amusing, challenging, and definitely provocative. We're here this week to discuss everything there is about businesses and the bank, how to boost our economy in this time of great austerity. And I am pleased to welcome our very special guests with all their knowledge today to help us in this feat. We've got Johnny Flowers, a local businessman here in Huddersfield from Ashborough Garage. And we've got a historian from the Civic Society, Chris Marsden, who is going to help us on our way in this lively debate. But as I said, we are interactive. So we do expect to talk to you and you should talk back to us and you can do so at info at kirkleyslocaltv.com or you can Twitter at Kirkley's Local TV. Gentlemen, welcome. And I am sure you are ready. And we're going to start off by asking this question. What can the banks do to assist small businesses to survive in this harsh economic climate? Mr. Flowers, as a businessman, please start the show for us. Well, maybe controversial, but I can't see what the banks can do more than what they're doing at the moment. I, I thought people talk about small business. As far as I can see, there are no small businesses. There are business. And when you go to the bank as a small business, straight away they put a face up. You need to go and say you are doing a business. You need to have your projections on all the relative things that you need. And I'm sure the bank will talk to you. I think one of the main things about uh, people who start a business don't appreciate that the bank will treat you as any other business. They won't, they won't be looking at you as a small business. They'll be looking to you as a business. You need to be able to repay your charges and your cost and how you're going to live. Well, we definitely have Mr. Flo starting us to already redefining the business courses for us all. And in the real world, they do mention it as macro or micro business. And I want us to understand that, yeah, the scale is important on what scale your business is at. And maybe some of our listeners are saying, my business is small and I need the banks to appreciate what I am doing compared to the giants of this time. Chris, do you think our banks can do any better to help struggling businesses at this time, small or big? Uh, interesting that you should start with such an easy question as to what banks can do for the economy. Um, I think the government um, has put a lot of money available to banks for cheap loans through the funding for loans initiative. And I understand that something like 80 billion pounds were made available for banks to borrow cheaply below the market rate. So that could be passed, that could be lent, should I say, to businesses. Now, over the last three years, that's, that's been moderately successful. Um, the scheme's changed. Um, individuals can no longer borrow money because it was starting to overheat the housing market. So it's now businesses only. And as Johnny has said, businesses need to sharpen their expectation when going to a bank. Be realistic with a business plan, um, charm the bank, sell yourself to the bank and how you're, you're doing the right thing. And banks should have an interest in borrowing, in lending you money, rather than gambling with it on some dodgy schemes, as we've seen over the last 20 years. So, yes, banks can, can help, and they need to listen and adapt their product to allow businesses to borrow on the terms that have been organized by the government. Thank you. So, Mr. Flowers, we'll get back to you on that same question. Do you think that there are too many red tapes for local businesses on whichever level, micro or macro, when it comes to the bank, a lot of paperwork, um, a lot is required which many people are not prepared for. How would you speak to the bank and speak to the local businesses how to get 
overcome these red tapes? Well, personally, from my point of view, I think that there ought to be places where people who want to start a business go to, to recognize what their approach should be to the bank. Because I'm sure that all the banks want to know is that you will be able to pay your dues. You can meet your, your, your demands, not only in paying them, but you also have to live. If you're a small person, one business, you have to live as well. So you must have plans how you're going to survive and how you're going to pay your dues back. And I think that maybe in the society, our society, this is one of the things that we ought to look at, how people can go to, uh, well, maybe not a, a school or college, but just to where you meet one-to-one -one and talk with somebody who knows about finance, who knows how to direct you, how you can prepare your, um, or you can prepare your statements and all the things that the bank will need. And I'm, I'm again, I'm saying, is the bank is willing to lend if you can pay it back. If you can't pay back or you can't show how you're going to pay it, they won't lend you. And nobody's in business not to make any money. Just as you want to make money, so is what the banks want to do. Johnny, isn't it ironic that the regional development agencies that did sponsor the small business startup agencies locally were wound up by government as part of the um, realignment of, of, uh, of government. No, Yorkshire Forward was effectively shut down. That's right. And those, those functions were lost. So we have a need for, 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 for new businesses, yeah. as Johnny suggests, but where do they go for support? Because that support's been taken away. Gentlemen, globally, it's, there's a meltdown. But we've got to be optimistic. We've got to find a way through all of this demise. What would be your message to the local businesses here in Kirklees, how to stay afloat? What would be your message to our listeners? <laughs> if we could tell the people that, then every business would be successful. You have to be keyed up in what you're doing. And you have to know what you're doing. Uh, you can't go in business just to make money and to spend it willy-nilly. You have to put what you've made back in your business. You have to be able to meet your demands. That's what you need to tell. We need to tell new business. And I, I'm not saying small business, I'm saying new business. New business. Because all business are business, yes. no small, small or, or big. Yes, they are they're going through the same procedures. They need to make a profit. They have to have scheme to make profits. Big supermarkets, simple things they do, move the saleable things at the back of the store, put the unsaleable at the front of the stores. They keep doing it every day. Dynamics. Yet the hairdressers have doing their doing hair. Did never change. It's the same chair, same place. No demands. No, you know, no change. You need to. In encourage new people to come to your business. Lovely. Chris, what would you say to the local businesses who feel that this is austere time and we need to get over? I don't think I'm qualified to write a self-help guide for businesses, but um, my marketing history suggests that you need to mind your, your, your customer base. You need to focus on delivering what the customer wants and not what you think they want. And you need to listen and watch how the market is changing. And businesses are going to fail. They're going to continue to fail. And that, that shows a sign of health, I suppose, in that new businesses are taking away of, uh, n new, yes. new pathways and income streams to them that others like the, the giants we've recently fallen in the last few years have gone because they have become fossilized and, and, and can't adapt. I'm thinking of HMV as a, as a famous example yeah. of something that was you know, um, teetering. But the book trade is changing, it has changed. So we're not, we're not I think, on an apocalypse, as, as you suggest. There's not a, it's not, it's, it is evolution of business, and things are going to continue to change, and businesses are going to continue to fail, but that's, it, that's not always um, a sign of ill health in the economy. Lovely. Well, it's our aim here at Kirkley's Local TV to keep you informed, 
interactive, interesting, and lively. So we're taking a short break now, but we're asking the feedback to us. Let us know how you are being impacted by this discussion here on a weekly wind-up. You can do so at info at kirkleyslocaltv.com or on Twitter at Kirkley's Local TV. See you after the break. Welcome back to this week's edition of Kirkley's Local TV's Weekly Wind-Up. And we're here discussing everything there is about business in Kirkley's. And we have on our panel today, Johnny Flowers and Chris Marsden. And we are now going to look at our high street. And it can be depressing sometimes when you walk across the country and see how many shops are going up, closing next week or closing down. And many of our high streets are becoming a ghost town. Chris, you are a historian and you're very much interested in keeping the faces of our buildings up. What can we do in these last days to help the business to stay afloat on the high street? The high street needs to be a destination in its own rights, rather than the shopping mall or the out-of-towns retail development. And I think our high streets are in danger of becoming toxic in that Planning allows any business to open on any street, more or less these days, so you get book bookies which are not good neighbours to other retailers. So you get a street furniture, you get street clutter, you get shop signs that as a, as a whole make the high street literally an un unattractive place to be. And the quality retailer, and we've seen some recently in Huddersfield, doesn't want to share a frontage with businesses it doesn't want to be seen, seen associated with. So you get a migration of the upmarket shops out of town or into, into the shopping mall. And here in Huddersfield and in Dewsbury, we can see charity shops and pound shops opening which drag the street down so that when you see Wilkinson's as being the premier marketer, the premier store on a street, you know that things aren't well for that street. And we see that in, the, in our, our local towns. Nothing against Wilkinson's, I shop there all the time. But it's not, it's not a great advert for a town in which that is the main store. So I'd like to see more, more planning control. I'd like to see more street hygiene in that it's kept clean and that the council plants flower beds or maintains the street furniture or picks up the chewing gum because that's what the private sector is doing in the shopping mall, so why can't we do it to make our streets more attractive? Well, I sincerely hope that Kirkley's local council has tuned in this morning to hear the wisdom of one of our greatest historians here, saying that there's something toxic that is happening on our high street. Are we going to see the demise of the famous stores going down for just the charity shops and the one pound shops. We're coming back to that, Mr. Flowers. How can we make our high street more attractive as a local businessman? Well, I have a different view from that because I That's think good. business needs people. And in order for business uh, shops in the center of town to be successful, it needs people in the town. What this town is doing is driving the people out. The, there's no car parks in the town. The, uh, the, the, you have to pay so much to be in the town to get things. The big business are moving out of town because they will go to other places where people can come. Hardly can uh, uh, anybody go into Huddersfield with their car. There's nowhere to park. There's no street to drive on. You can't stop on any of the streets. You have to have people in the town. And I think my personal belief is that the people who run the council do not understand what business is. And that's why we're having the problem. And I'm afraid, if, as it continues like this, all the town centers are going to be ghost towns. There will be nobody there to shop. There will be only people to live. And, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm afraid in the next 10, 15 years, the town center will become 
uh, housing markets for people because people won't be able to to live in the uh, to shop in the town. The, the rent's too expensive, the rates too expensive, and the people who buys in town is less. There's no business that's going to survive in the town centres. Let's start the two because I, I I really like Chris's point about where our high street is going in terms of it being up market or down market. The face of it, apart from the the beauty side, the flowers and everything. Do we really want to see our high street filled with just one pawn shops regardless of the people coming in? Or do we want to see some of the great British stores still remain focused on the high street? How does Field, for example, is not a ghost town in any sense. It's a very high footfall. But you'll see parts of the town which are managed in one way, being very successful, and you'll see other streets that are not successful. And it is, as I said, it's not to do with car parking. We have massive car parking in Huddersfield. And the Kingsgate Centre is very successful. It's fully let, 100%. So I don't think you can say it is uh, a ghost town, Johnny. I think, I think it's, it's, it's very attractive to come and shop in Huddersfield. It's just that we have streets in Huddersfield that are on the decline. And if the Kingsgate and, or another shopping centre was to open, or to expand, then we'd get more of the same because the migration of businesses towards the anchors would continue. So I would like to see more pedestrianisation. I'd like to see more bus lanes, more cameras, more control, more, more comfort in the town centre, more security, where you can feel you can be and, and your children can play. There should be playgrounds, there are coffee shops, you can relax. And if we can make that place an attractive place to be, then towns will thrive. Lovely. Well, I know you, our viewers, are thinking more shops, more merchandise, and you may be saying, well, more money in our pockets. Well, I hope that is what you're saying as you tune in, because this is the best thing going at the moment. I hope you're enjoying this discussion. And we're going to go straight into it, Chris. We want to get down to the real nitty gritty of it. Small businesses are really, Mr. Flowers is debating it. Let's get rid of micro and macro business now. Business per se are feeling more squeezed because there's Sainsbury's and there's Tesco putting up all their little express stores. And maybe those with not the power and the might are feeling we cannot match up to these giants. How are we going to get the balance right in these last crucial times? I think that has to do with the planners. We have lost all the corner shops in others field, all, almost all the corner shops, the hundreds have been closed. They've been closed because there's so many supermarkets that is opened up. I know Chris says that you don't want cars there, but you want people. You have to have methods of getting the people in. You have to have them in to spend. Uh, the coffee shops won't allow the uh, retailers to get things because people just want a coffee, so they won't be buying. Supermarkets is hived. When you go to a supermarket, it's packed out, mostly because people can go and park the cars and then go into the market and shop. I think that's what the town should be. You should be able to go into the town and shop. And as more cars have changed over the years, uh, so people will not walk anywhere. They want to be on the doorsteps. Everything has to be in the hand. They don't want to walk a hundred yards. That's the, the, the reality of what things are now. You go to any supermarket now, and it's got more people in it than what is in the town center. Chris, what can you say to, the, to those businesses who are looking up to the giants and think, well, maybe they're overshadowing us and we're not going to be able to survive in the next five, 10 years. What, what, what needs to be done? Well, the giants you speak of were originally small businesses and they were successful and I don't see why small businesses now can't be as successful and grow if they meet consumer expectation and demand. So online sales is obviously the way for many lines of goods where comparison shopping is now possible to do online. But that doesn't mean our towns are have to be empty of small businesses because they can offer creative, innovative products, design-based, and here in Huddersfield we have 
a university full of creative people producing new lines and new products. Ne next week, or in a couple of weeks' time, there'll be the university degree show, and they'll show there how creative young people are. So I just implore people to try and be brave, establish businesses on their design and innovation, and sell it online if need be, sell it in shops, but, but do, don't stop and swallow the money from the big, the big companies, do it on your own. Gotta be brave. Well, maybe you're listening this morning and you're contemplating going into business and you want to listen further because we are gonna go live again with a discussion we're informative and interactive and Johnny Flowers and Chris Marsden is going to help us through Kirkley's local TV to encourage us to stay focused and to go self-employed. Now, gentlemen, we, we have been encouraged by the government that everybody needs to think of self-employment and how to go into businesses. Do you think that is going to be the way forward and what incentive would people have and need to go start up your own business, especially in these last days. They may be listening now and want to hear from experts like ourselves as to what do we do? I've got this money, snatch away. Should I really invest and start up my own business? What would you say to our listeners? Well, I started as a small business, uh, a one-man business, and uh, now uh, it's just not a big, big business, but it's more than a one-man business. And I, I think I have the same ideas as most people who start a business did. You have to work hard on it, you have to continue in it, and you can't take everything out of it. You, you really, you, the people who are born to do business, do it. You can't just go up and say, I'm going to do business without thinking and be prepared to do the things that the business needs. And Chris says that, uh, all the business started with small business, but they merge and they get bigger and bigger. Most one-man business remains one man and they never get extended and it dies. So you have to be thinking, not a year in advance, but maybe 10 years, five years, 10 years in advance. That's how a business will grow. Chris, what would you have to join and say to us on that? Well, I think, yes, businesses do grow or they can stay the same but businesses that grow are ambitious and I and I think it's important that people are imaginative about their businesses they can foresee themselves as growing into another branch another partner so that they can develop their ideas um, there are so many examples in, the, in this town and around the country it, it's just a question of attitude um, I'm not in business, um, but I do business because people ask me to, to, do, to do things for them. I'm a somewhat reluctant businessman in that I actually get asked to do jobs um, as consultancies for firms, and I'm happy to do it because I have a skill which I can share. Um, I would be happy for people to um, form cooperative um, business, business clubs in which each other can support each other on advice on business planning. I think young people need to learn about self-employment and not rely on the exploitation by our rather major retailers. You did hear it from us here. In summary, if you're thinking of going into your own business, you've got to have a positive attitude, you've got to work hard, stay focused, think outside of the box, be innovative, and review your plans. It can be done. Please speak to us. We would like to hear your views on today's program. And we want to encourage you to do so if you want to talk to us at info at kirkleysLocalTV.com or on Twitter at, local, at Kirkley's Local TV. Before we go, gentlemen, we're going to be a bit more trivial. We're having a bit of problem um, with the World Cup at the moment. And although it's been staged in Brazil, we want to know how we, the local businesses here in Kirklees, can benefit from the football high point in a few weeks' time. And although we're having problems with who sings the anthem and should it be sung, how really can the businesses boost itself and gain some money from World Cup 2014? 
I, I think uh, this World Cup is one of them, apart from the year when uh, England did not uh, get into the World Cup, uh, I think this is the most low-key the World Cup I've seen for a long, long time. And it is the media who needs to hype it up. There, I haven't seen two cars with flags on it. I've seen very few P, um, Union Jacks about. Uh, the shops need to have some Union Jacks put up, uh, say that we're going to show it on uh, TV. Do something to make the people realize is that there's a World Cup. It is too low-keyed. Single person cannot do it. It needs everybody to join in and let's support England. Hey, Chris. Well, if you can find me a pub or a cafe which is football free, no live TV, no commentary, no merchandise, I'll go there. I'll spend my money in that bar. Please, let's, let, let's get together. Let's ignore the World Cup and have a good life. Get some money. Oh, but, you. But, but you did say, how would, we, how would business um, gain from the World Cup? Yes. That's what I was commenting on. Right. How, how they right. would gain. And, and Chris is really giving a counter argument. <laughs> how businesses can flourish if you take World Cup out of the pubs and put in some more drink and invite the whole world to the pubs. And I do believe that in Great Britain we can do that because we're a nation of drinkers. We're slowly becoming a nation of drinkers. We did hear it from us. Time has eluded us and we have to go. But tune in next week for Kirkley's Local TV Weekly Wind Up. Thanks for watching and thanks to my guests. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye. Thank thanks, Carlton.